Okay, so um, first things first, I got an, an extra monitor over here. If I'm looking over here, it's because I'm looking at the slides. Second, I'm wearing a jacket today and I'm in a dark room, uh, mostly because it's cold in my house and I refuse to turn up the heat because by darn it, it's springtime, all right? My heater got turned off because... It didn't actually get turned off, but um, it is on like power saving mode. And so the heater goes down to like 60 degrees instead of like 69, 70 degrees um, while I'm away at work, but I'm not away at work. I'm, I'm here recording this, you know, that's okay. Um, so today we are going to throw, we're gonna throw some new stuff at us. Uh, it's gonna be really exciting stuff. Um, we're gonna get a lot of interactivity um, a lot of like superpowers from the web. And we're going to do that using APIs. Now, APIs is this big old thing. Um, you ever hear about the cloud? Yeah, it's probably an API. Um, yeah, it's, it stands for application programming interface. And this is where the presentation begins. This is where the presentation begins. The next page. Um, here's some of the questions that this particular presentation is going to answer. There will be another video of a tutorial kind of a walkthrough of the project and so we're we're really right now right now only looking at kind of vocabulary <laughs> okay we are not looking at how do i solve this problem we are looking at what are the words and what do the words mean so that we we can understand ourselves when we talk about this problem and so some of those questions are like what is an api how do you use an api how would you go about making it API. What examples of APIs exist? Are you using them already and you don't even know it? Um, what's a URL query string? That's, that's, that's a bunch of new words. And what the heck is an async function? Uh, I, I mean, I do know, but we'll get there. Um, so let's start with what it is an API. Um, and I got to tell you, API is basically a remote control. Now, if you do a Google search for what is an API, you are going to get a hundred different people spinning slightly different variations of this. Uh, but basically an API is an interface. Let's start with that last word, which means that it's, it's how you interact with something else. Okay. And it's a, an interface for programming an application. I, 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 look, imagine you have a TV. Okay. And you want your TV to, to turn the volume up or down. I don't, I don't care. So you, you on the remote control, you hit the button, the button that says volume up or the volume down button. You hit one of those buttons and then the TV turns the volume up or it turns the volume down, depending on what button you push. All right. The API here, um, works like that, but for different apps. If an app wants to talk to another app, it doesn't care how the app works. I mean, oh my gosh, do you guys know how your TV turns up the volume? No. No, I, I don't, I don't care how the t TV turns up my volume. I don't know how the TV turns up my volume. I used to, when I had an older TV, it had a knob that literally turned up the volume. That was a potentiometer. And it was like just straight up hooked up to the, like the actual wires for the speaker and the, the, the potentiometer, like as you moved it, more contact would happen. And so uh, more volume would be able to come out the speaker. It doesn't work like that anymore. I, I have no idea like how it works anymore. None at all. Uh, in fact, my TV can't even use like the volume button unless you have the remote, right? Like I, I can tell you that when I hit the button on the remote, I have two different types of remotes in my, in my particular house. One, one type of the remote uses an infrared beam, like a little light beep, 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 beep. And it sends effectively like a little beep, 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 like Morrissey code message. It's not really Morrissey code, but it's, it's like, some sort of like beep, beep, beep in light and it shoots it through light as a laser beam uh, boop, into the TV. And if it's not pointed directly at the TV, TV doesn't know what's happening. I have other types of remotes in my house. I can change the channel from my bathroom if I wanted to, because that one's connected via Bluetooth for some reason. Oh my gosh. I, I don't know. I do not know. Right. And like, I don't need to know because all I need, all I need is to be able to hit the button and for the volume to go up or down right? That's, that's an API. Um, <sighs> yeah, it's magic and they exist everywhere. <laughs> Let's talk about some of these things, right? For example, Twitter, maybe, maybe you want to send a tweet 
Okay, and um, and you want to send a tweet, but you're you're suffering from the ADHDs, and you know that if you log into Twitter on your computer or even on your phone, you're going to start scrolling and scrolling, and you're you're, you're not going to send the tweet that you meant to send. But then also, you're going to read too many tweets and you're going to have too many opinions and you're going to, you're going to lose, lose time. You're going to lose a half an hour, which should take you 15 seconds to just be like spout your opinion to the world. Now it takes a half an hour because you're like getting all up in everybody else's business. Cause that's how Twitter works. Right now. That's, that's fine and dandy, but like you've also noticed, right? I'm sure that the Twitter on your computer, on your like internet is a little bit different than the Twitter on your phone. And if, and if you're like, me, you got a special third party app that just lets you tweet. It doesn't let you read the Twitter. It just posts to Twitter. It just tweets. It doesn't hear. It just boop, boop, boop. Do, do I care how it works? No, I don't. I don't care how it works. There's some sort of magic in between my app and the Twitter app. And it just does it. And like, that's amazing. That, that like a third party app can use the Twitter services, you know, uh, discords another way, like my discord chat, it's great. But like, what if I want a bot to like moderate my chat? What if I want to combine my discord chat into my like stream on Twitch and on YouTube and like put that into my stream on OBS, right? Like having all of those things connect like puzzle lock together. My gosh, like, all of those are done with APIs. All of them are done with APIs. And so, so we don't have to care. Well, and, and we could, if we wanted to could dive in there, figure out how it works. That's somebody's job. Somebody's making bunches of money from it. Um, but we don't need to know because we can just, we can just use it. Uh, Google maps, same way, right? Like, you know, like I, I got, I don't know, three or four different uh, you know, things on my phone, apps on my phone that can just use Google map information that when I click a button, it doesn't even bother with their own map. It just like sends that information to the Google maps and just opens it either inside of that app as like a separate little window, like a little section, or as like, no, it just takes me to the Google map. I got a friend who made like a Pokemon knockoff and he's just using Google maps and like for the back end. It's like magic. And that's, that's what APIs allow us to do. They allow us effectively to connect to different things. So also, just like your remote control, right, for your TV only has so many buttons, right? Like the remote control that I got from my parents, it's got a, it's got a channel up button, doesn't even actually change the channel. Uh, it's got a volume up and down button, you know, and it's got a power off button, it's got a YouTube button, and it's got that little like selectory button in the middle and like that channel up and down button dude that doesn't change the channel that just that just switches between apps on their smart tv it they, they have a youtube channel they got a netflix channel they got they have uh like google plus not google plus is disney plus they got they got pan pan i don't know they got a bunch of other channels that they think are channels and they just click the up button and it doesn't go like it just goes to the next one in the cycle. I don't know. It was amazing. And it's all done via APIs. And that's all my parents get. Just like with these APIs, there's there's some danger you could do. Like if you had access to the whole Twitter database, you could do some crazy stuff. But if all that Twitter is giving you access to do is to like post a tweet and read other people's tweets, you can't like post a tweet as them, right? You can't like delete your tweets. You can't delete their tweets. Like that, that API isn't open. You know, it's, 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 controlled and which really comes down to like making and using an API right making an API is definitely a lot harder um, for us we're not gonna make an API we're gonna use an API um, most of that is because one it's more difficult but two like a lot of what the API does is like server side stuff back end stuff and what this class is trying to do is like front end stuff we need to be able to like design for the internet but we're not trying to design the internet. Um, that's another way of saying that. We're trying to, uh, in a car, we can paint the car. We can, we can add cup holders to the car. We, could, we can mess around with the way the steering wheel feels and where the seats are in the car. But we're not screwing around with the engine. 
All right, we are not converting this thing from a diesel engine to an unleaded engine, or or even we're not taking out the gas burning engine and putting in a bunch of batteries. That is that is all non cosmetic. That is all behind the scenes. All right. Um, for the purposes of this class, we haven't even really gotten to the point where we put any of our web pages online yet. Uh, all of your web pages have been existing primarily on your computer. We've been sharing them as like zip files, um, which is kind of sad and sort of defeats the purpose of the internet. But um, that's a problem. We'll get to. I guess we will get to it. Uh, no, like, spoiler. We're you're gonna put your stuff online. It's super fun, actually. If you haven't done it already, just for the fun of doing it, like wait till next week, I guess. <laughs> anyway. Um, so we are going to be using an API. Uh, and when you make an API, you, you specifically think, okay, how do I want users to use this? What buttons do I want to put on the remote control? And when we use the API, we need to see what the remote control is that they gave us and how do we use those for ourselves? So, um, next slide. So uh, the specific, um, the specific, there we go. Um, sorry, I just had to, you are here and i kept looking at my like pit video over there anyway so the url basically is a universal resource locator that's what url stands for this is the address bar in your um in your web browser uh this is when we type in www.google.com uh what we're looking for is the com domain and then we are looking for the google domain and then we were looking for the well the www part of Google, because there's also the at part of Google where you can have like, you know, emails and stuff. And there's, there's other things. Um, and all of that is effectively in the URL or universal resource locator. Um, and you can actually add things depending on how the server is set up to take API calls. If they're set up like this, this is one of the places where we can find that remote control. And that is through a query. That query here is just a request or a search, um, but it's a it's a it's a parameter kind of thing. So URL parameters, um, you can just type them into the URL. The, the the fancy thing here is with the question mark, and the and then you get like a key value pair, and then you can add a bunch of them with the ampersand symbol. In fact, hold on a second. Ta -da! So thanks to um, Simrush blog uh, for the cool images here. Um, and basically what we're looking here at is two two urls um and the top one has you know a good example the bottom one's got the example with just more like default information here um but what we see here is the basic url going to example.com slash something and then question mark so that slash widgets or that slash page in the second one that slash widgets would effectively be the page and then the question mark here is sending information to the server that's hosting that web page. And it's sending a key and a value pair, right? And then it's, it's it, you can tack on as many key value pairs as you want to create a very nice, long, super confusing URL. Um, but effectively, you're sending information to the server. The server's reading that URL to find the page. And then it's also actually specifically looking at the parameters that you've sent it through the URL query. And it's saying, oh, okay, this is actually what they want. And so then it's sending it back. This is effectively like my remote control that sends the IR, the infrared thing. Boop, 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 boop. This is this is how it's sending that information. Okay. Now, different APIs, different work in different ways. The particular API that we are going to be working with for this project is the Magic the Gathering API. And we are going to be using specifically this URL query. Okay, now let's go ahead and practice that. This is an address. We can see that we've got the, you know, address and then question mark, page size equals one. That is the key value. And then the ampersand, because we're just trying to like add on things. We can, we can have more than two. We can have less than two. We can have, we can have any number of key value pairs here. Um, and and so let's actually type this in. Let's, uh, let's see if I can open up a this. And let's grab this over to here. And is that still recording? That is still recording. And so right here, I have the information API magic the gathering dot o v one cards page size one random equals true. If I hit the return button, I get this, which is 
which is text, I suppose, technically. Um, I don't know if you can read it. It says that the, the card uh, and the name is Willow the Wisp. And if I refresh this again, I should get a different card. Yep, here we go. Card, name, gate, Colossus. If I do it again, refresh it. Um, card, name, Goblin, Locksmith. So what's happening here is that my page size is one. Okay, and my random is true. So and these are keys that the API is specifically expecting. All right, um, and, and we will dive more into what keys and what kind of values it will be expecting in the next video. But this is the key value pair, right? So it starts with the question mark. That's how we start a query in the URL. Uh, and this is, again, this is just the address, right? If I, if I wanted to change this to um, size two, um, what I would expect to see will be a little bit different. See, here's my card's name, right? And then down a little bit farther, I would expect to see name again, right here, boom, Maris. And so now I've got two cards, boom, and boom. And if I do that again, I got name, ooh, I lost my right here. And then again, I can just be halfway through or so. Expect another name. I gotta, I gotta find it. Oops, must be Commando. Name. There's one. Oh, I forgot to change my size to two again. Two. Fresh that. Okay, well, there's a bunch of names now. But these are names in different like languages, foreign names, right? Blah blah blah. So anyway, there's Eternal Witness. There's life gift. And if I uh, do it again, again, name Skull Prophet, name down here something else. Name down here, Armageddon. So, yeah, all that is that first card. That's the second card. Kind of weird. Anyway, doesn't matter. Uh, the, the point that I'm trying to make here is that this URL, uh, we are effectively hacking the url we're hackers we are super cool hackers um but this is how it works okay this is this is let's uh let's go ahead and close that and then let's go back one slide here Whoa, back a slide aha again what we are seeing here is that we are seeing the url Whoa. we are seeing the url and we are seeing the query selector with question mark and then key value pairs and then the separator with the ampersand symbol same thing down here okay the query string begins value separator that's the separator first variable property value variable name property value okay key value pairs and um yeah so what's actually happening effectively with the api call is doing um is that it's making the request that's us we make the url we're making the request the server does whatever the server does and then we get that response that text that we were getting that is the response um and sometimes that takes a little bit of time sometimes it goes really quick to us humans it goes really quick uh i've i've i have noticed that sometimes when i do it it takes almost you know seconds i've had to wait once 10 whole seconds which is a really long time um and super long time the majority of the time that i do it it takes no time right but also no time for us humans is a lot longer than no time for a computer and so what we're actually going to need to do is really understand that like when we write code so far when we've written the code it's it just happens boom 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 just goes down the list it does the thing it doesn't have to wait right because everything that happened before it happened before it but when we get to the point where we're making requests with other apis we're effectively sending out a message in the bottle into the ocean of the internet and we are saying hey magic the gathering api can you send me a, a, a card and, and make it a random card and then when it gets around to it it will send that information when it gets around to it but if i've got a code that says hey send that request all right cool and then my next said hey with the response to that request and i'm like dude i ain't got the response to that request yet but i don't care i'm keep on going right and so so we need to have ways to to wait 
for that response. And the way that we wait for that response is using the async await and using a fetch to fetch the request and a dot then. Um, and that allows us to effectively say, hey, go do the thing in the code, and then don't do the next thing until we get a response, right? We, we're not gonna do the next thing until we get a response. Um, and we'll show you in the code how that looks when we start doing the code, but it's going to be important. And, and it's, when I first saw it, I didn't quite understand what was happening because you'll also see that like, it does the thing and then it'll just keep going and then it'll come back and it'll kind of do the thing. Um, but if, if you want things to happen after it comes back, you have to put it all into this like asynchronous wait then thing. So it has to like bloop, new little new little thing. Um, and again, I'll point that out when we get into the code. But but this could take uh, you know milliseconds, and milliseconds is just not quick enough. Uh, and then I think for the last side, we need to talk about that stuff that we got back, right? Um, and, and it looked like just a bunch of text with a bunch of curly brackets and like quote marks and parentheses. And it was all very, very confusing. Um, but it doesn't have to be confusing because really what we're dealing with is called a JSON object. JSON here is JavaScript object notation. Um, and so it's a little weird to be able to say JSON object because it's a JavaScript object notation object, but also, um, it makes sense and a lot of people do it so it's, it's a pretty common term um but if we look over you know in the in the code i guess it'd be over here um can you see that yellow star i can see a yellow star on my code but you can't see it because my face is see this little yellow, yellow star okay um that was fun uh in this in this code right over here uh we have an object and the object has these key values right key value pair, key, value pair, key, value pair, key, weirdly enough, value pair, right? All of this is an actual array. That's okay. You can have an array full of arrays. And when I think about this too, this is like one object, right? And then this is a second object with similar key value pairs. And that's because it's well formatted. That's what we're expecting to see. We're expecting to see, especially for our cards, we're expecting to see a name and then the card name. And we're expecting to see like an image and then a URL of the image. Uh, and we're expecting to see like, like uh, mana cost. We're expecting to see flavor text. We're expecting to see like um, card text, you know, something like that. Or maybe even like an artist name or um, lots of other information. Basically any way you can describe the particular card, any part of the particular card, uh, it'll be there in a database. And that's what this uh, Magic the Gathering page API has done for us effectively. It's, it's got a database out there and it's going to allow us to mess around with the database. Is there better ways to mess around with databases? Yeah, probably. Do we need to do that right now? No, no, we don't. And is this going to be very useful as we continue, you know, building web pages and stuff in the future? Heck yeah, you're going to love <laughs> you're just going to love working with JSON objects. It is what the internet's made out of. A lot of the times it feels that way. Anyway, um, I think that does it for this particular slideshow. That does it effectively for the vocabulary. Um, but feel free to watch it over and over and over again if you have uh, the desire. Um, feel free to ask me questions if there's any any. Uh, you know, confusion about this. Like I, I get paid to teach, I guess. Uh, sometimes I forget what I don't know. And so if you got questions, you know, use that discussion. Maybe I forgot to mention something. I'd love to answer your questions. Okay. I'm going to stop this and then I'm going to record another video, uh, basically diving into the code. Um, have fun.